Can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Just want to welcome you again to another Sabbath. And we're going to begin with opening prayer. Please stand. Father in heaven, we come into your courts this morning and we ask you, Lord, for forgiveness of sins and that you cleanse us from all unrighteousness so we can stand in the presence of a holy God. Father, may everything that's done in this place be done to your name's honor and glory. We thank you for joining mercy for those who have arrived and we pray for those who are on their way. Bless us today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing for the opening hymn, hymn number 524, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. Good morning. Let's sing. Call it me. Oh 
This morning we're going to be reviewing lesson number five. What's the title of the lesson we're reviewing this morning? Singing the Lord's Song in a Strange Land. So when you hear that title, what comes to mind? The children of Israel in um, Babylon. Children of Israel in Babylon. Mm -hmm. Anything else comes to mind? Singing the Lord's song in a strange land. When they were stuck in Egypt. When they were stuck in Egypt. Yeah. Okay. In the wilderness, it's a strange land. Outside of the promised land is strange land. Let's, the memory text is the title. Let's read the memory text together. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Psalms 137, verse 4. But I like the intro part on Sabbath. It says, We need not. We do not need to get deep into the book of Psalms in order to discover that the Psalms are uttered in an imperfect world. When something is imperfect, what, what can you say about it? Not perfect. <laughs> not perfect? <laughs> Go ahead, Taffy. <laughs> that's, that's all right. When it comes to you, let us know. Yeah. An imperfect world, it's not in the order that God designed because God is the creator. It yeah. says, in the beginning, God created the heaven, heaven and, and the earth. earth. So if it's imperfect, it's not in the shape or the form that God had set it in. Yeah. One sin, evil, suffering, and death. The stable creation run by the sovereign Lord and his righteous laws is constantly threatened by evil. As sin corrupts the world more and more, the earth has become the curse has increasingly become a strange land to God's people. This reality creates a problem for the psalmist. How does one live a life of faith in a strange land? So we're 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 looking at living and singing in a strange land. But the part I like most about the title is it's singing the Lord's song in a strange land. It didn't say sang the Lord's song. So whatever land you're in, or whatever place you are, even though it might be strange because of the circumstances, what should we be doing? Singing the Lord's song. So let's look at Psalms. 34 verses 1 and 3. Psalms 34 verses 1 and verse 3. Verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. And verse 3 says, O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. So no matter what, no matter where, Praises of God must continually be on our lips. And one of our pledges says, keep a song in my heart and go on God's errand. The Pathfinder's law for me to keep the morning watch, do my honest part, care for my body, keep a level eye, be courteous and obedient, walk softly the sanctuary, keep a song in my heart, go on God's errand. So a song should always be on our lips. Let's look at Psalms 47 verse 1. Psalms 147, verse 1. Can someone read, please? Yes, please. 
So it calls us to praise the Lord for it is good to sing praises unto the Lord. So different places because of sin and so on, it can be a strange land. We live in a world, we live in a strange land. We are, we are considered what? Pilgrims. Pilgrims. We're pilgrims and strangers. So heaven is our home. And we, we can also think of the hymn, I will sing of Jesus' love, sing of him who first loved me, for he left right words above and died in Calvary. So when, the, when God, when we look and think of God's goodness, all we can do is utter praise. Amen. Let's look at some folks who were in a strange land and they were singing. Let's go to Acts 16, verse 25. When you read, you'll discover who you're talking about. Acts chapter 16, verse 25, and then we'll move on. Can someone please read? Yeah. For at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. So at midnight, Paul and Silas sang praises to God. Where was Paul and Silas? After, after receiving a beating from the, from the gods, whatever it is, and they were tortured, and uh, even though they were singing. Even in prison, they were singing. What is shutting you in? Or are you shutting yourself in? whatever prisons we might find ourselves in. Sometimes the mind sometimes can box you in, mm -hmm. into a prison. Certain fears and certain things keep you trapped in a particular place and you don't grow or try to go transcend above it. Mm -hmm. But wherever we find ourselves, we can sing praises to God. Amen? Amen. 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 All right, let's go on to Sunday. So Sunday, the days of evil. When I thought of the days of evil, I thought of Matthew 24 talks about as in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. The days are evil. Another thing that came to mind, the early church, the reformers, they went through some things that would blow our minds. Because of what they suffered, we have the Bible in our hand. We can read it in our own language. This book cost a lot of saints their lives, their freedom, their liberty. They gave all so we could have this book. So this is not a book that we can have collecting dust. It's valuable. It's the word of God. It's life. And this points the way to eternity. This is the compass that will point our way home. As I said, the Bible, it's basic instructions before leaving earth. So let's look at some of the verses. We're not going to read everything because we studied this week. Yeah. So we're just going to look at Psalm 79, verses 5 to 13. And the question is, what is at stake here? 5 to 13? Yes, please. How will you, O Lord? How will you angry forever? Will your jealousy burn like fire? Or pour out your anger on the nation that you do not know you? and on the kingdom that you do not call upon your name. For they have devoured Jacob and laid waste his habitation. Do not remember against our former iniquities. Let your compassion come speedily to meet us, for we are brought very low. So help us, O God, of our salvation, for the glory of, our, of your name. Deliver us and attune us for our sins, for your name's sake. We should why should the nation say, Where is their God? Let the avenging of the outpoured blood of your servants be known among the nations before our eyes. And let the groans of the prisoners come before you. According to your great power, preserve those doomed to die. Return saving forth into the lap of our neighbors the tongues of with which they have taunted you, O Lord, but we, your people, the sheep of your pasture. You will give, we will give thanks to you forever. 
from generation to generation, we will recount your mission. Amen. Amen. So here, what, what is happening here in the psalm that we just read? And we read the other one. What did you conclude after studying Sunday? Well, the enemies were attacking them and they were in trouble. Therefore, they prayed for God's salvation, deliverance, and even though they remembered the God's blessings for them, and they cannot stop singing for the Lord. Amen. It also, the other text also mentioned the people were reproaching and blaspheming God's name, God's honor and his greatness. They were trusting in him as God. And they talk about we talk about sometimes righteous indignation. Mm. God is a holy God. Amen. And sometimes, even in our workplaces, people might just use the, the name of the Lord in vain and so on. So different places you hear it and you're like, they don't understand. If they understand who God is, then they would respect and revere him and honor him. They wouldn't use his name so lightly. Yeah. Because at the name of Jesus, what happened to demons? Demons flee. There is power. I don't think we understand the power and we don't and we don't exercise the power that we have in it. Amen. It says the psalmist seek to grasp the great controversy between God and the powers of evil, and he points to God's unfathomable forbearance as well as his infinite wisdom and power. From Adam and Eve's sin, God could have just wiped everything clean. And in Noah's day, he did a cleaning again. So evil has really been something that God is not in favor of. But he's been forbearing grace and mercy. Let's look at Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 11. Because of God's mercy, a lot of us included, are delayed in our evil. Because when we think of Ananias and Sapphira, was judgment delayed for them? No. no. It was swift. Immediate. And if that was happening, then half of the things that we do, we would not do. Because we would say, if I do so and so, God is going to strike me dead. But because of his mercy... We abuse, the grace. we abuse the grace and the mercy of God. At, at the bottom it says, the honor of God, the honor of Christ is involved in the perfection of the character of his people. And this is from the Zara of Ages. How can you understand this important truth and what it should mean in your own Christian life? So the honor of God and of Christ is involved in the perfection of the character of his people. Because we are what? What are we here? We are his representative. We are ambassadors for the kingdom of God. Matthew says he are the light of where? Of the house? Of the world. A city that's set under a hill? No. A city that's set upon a hill? That cannot be hid. So we are spectators to men and to angels. Last week when Brother Rico was presenting, he said, you know, the God had gave testimony that what the devil and the one third of the angels were saying was not true. The unfallen world also gave testimony. And we also are the third witness. What are we going to say? Just and true are thy ways, O King of Saints. But our lives tell what we are saying. Amen. The lives we live is a reflection our outward action is an inflection of our inward conviction. They say, don't do as I say, do not as I say, but as I do. Because we say a lot of things, but we do less. Let's go on to Monday, at death's door. 
So let's go to Psalms 102. And we're going to read 3 to 5, 11, 23, and 24. Your ears are throughout all generations. Verse 3 to 5. 3 to 5. For my days are consumed like smoke, and my bones are burnt like a fat. My heart is stricken and withered like grass, so that I forget to eat my bread. By reason of five. Because of the sound of my groaning, my bones cling to my skin. So this, he sounds, how does he sound? Emaciated and almost at the point, the point of death. Afflicted, yeah. afflicted, yes. So if he's at this point, has God forsaken him? No. God has not forsaken him. So someone that's sick and dying, and from time to time we... We experience that loved ones, and so on. my dad was sick with prostate cancer. He died some years ago. Mm -hmm. And then to see that big tall man as a child, he would hold my two hands and swing, mm -hmm. and he'd have my little brother in a basket. And now he was, my sister was helping him to put on his clothes. He was holding on and putting one leg in and so on. And I was like, that's the big strong man? It, it, was, it was something to see. Yeah. And sickness is because of sin. The wages of Sin is what? Death. Death. But the gift of God victoriously is what? Eternal life. Christ so, Jesus. so we have to live for Christ so that we can live again. So his days are declining. Death is at the door. It says, these prayers for salvation from illness and death demonstrate that God's children are not exempt from the sufferings of this world. We have people who've never eaten meat but ended up with stomach cancer. We have people who've never smoked but end up with lung cancer mm -hmm. because of sin. Because you might not smoke, but secondhand smoke is just oh, as dangerous or even more yeah. dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes there are other pollutants in the air. Mm -hmm. mm. There's, a, there's a friend of mine whose dad worked in a factory. And some years after, they had a spot on his lungs. He was working with asbestos. He said he wanted a job. He went. They weren't wearing whatever protective gear to work with it. And those things will manifest themselves till 20, 30 years later. But God is still able. Sometimes he'll heal us from our sickness. Sometimes he'll put some of us to sleep. Mm -hmm. There's a brother from another church that he worked with me when we worked at the school. He was one of the janitors. He passed away on Sunday. I wanted to go see him tomorrow on Sunday. So nobody knows the day nor the hour when their time is coming. But as the Bible said, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart, because tomorrow is not promised to us. It says here, the goodness, God's goodness and his character surpasses our deepest hope. So whatever we, we struggle with or whatever we suffer, God's goodness surpasses that. There's nothing that we suffer or go through that's beyond what God can offer us. I have a quote here. It says, the Lord's, the Lord's merciful kindness is great towards us. He will never leave nor forsake those who trust in him. My brethren, my sister, you who feel that you are entering a dark path like the captives in Babylon must hang your harps upon the willows and let us make trial of cheerful song. You may say, how can I sing with this dark prospect before me, with this burden of sorrow and bereavement upon my soul? When we bring our petitions to the throne of grace, let us not forget to offer also anthems of thanksgiving. The eternal life of our Savior provides us with a constant cause 
for gratitude and praise. So even in the darkest time and darkest moment, we must still give thanks. Amen. Because sometimes the darkest things that we go through, whether divorce, the death of a loved one, loss of a job, broken relation, whatever it is, sometimes it's those things that the Lord uses to pull us closer to him. That's, that's the God we serve because sometimes he wants our attention. Because sometimes these things have become gods. Well, and also, it's, it's, I feel like all, well, we all know this, but the, the trials that we go through help us relate to someone that maybe before you went through that, you wouldn't be able to give any advice or help them through it. But now, since you've gone through that yourself, you're able to help them out in that situation. That, that, that's huge. Because God has done this for me, you can tell someone else. God has done that. Since he's done it for me, mm -hmm. he can do it for you as well. Let's go on to Tuesday. No, sister. Oh, go ahead, sorry. Um, and I agree with Catherine. And also, sometimes it's, it can be a wake-up call for us. Oh, yes. Because when everything is going so fully in our lives, uh, we don't have time for God. Yeah. Once we get shaken to the core, then we, where, do, where can we go to? Only to him, yeah. to God. Once we wake up. <laughs> yes, and, and, and those experiences, and it's really hard sometimes to to sing when you're in pain. Yeah. Mm. And sometimes you end up crying while you sing it. Yeah. Because your pain is so deep that, mm. hey, it's a way of taking out all that sorrow and knowing but the most amazing thing about our message is that we know that we have a God who cares for us. Amen. No matter what, um, how deep we get to the uh, pit, he can go there and reach us and bring us out. Amen. 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 So we're on Tuesday. Where is God? Sometimes in your experience, everything that can go wrong goes wrong. It's like, Lord, where are you? I'm praying and I'm singing and I'm reaching out, but I'm not hearing your voice. I'm not feeling your presence. Nothing is happening. It seems like it gets worse every day. So let's look at Psalms 69, verses 1 to 3. Can someone say to me, O oh God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in deep mud. Where there is no foothold, I have come into deep waters, and the flood sweep over me. I am weary with my crying out. My throat is parched. My eyes grow dim with, with waiting for my God. One, two, three. No, that one, two, three. Let's go. Yeah. Then I'm going to read one, oh, two, verse two. It says, Hide not thy face from me in the day when I am in trouble. Incline thine ear unto me. In the day when I call, answer me speedily. So sometimes you're in distress and you pray and you cry and you, you're calling out and it doesn't seem like he's doing anything. But sometimes when we pray and we agonize, sometimes he says yes, he says no, and he says when. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes if we pray and we get what everything right away, sometimes we think it's our doing. Mm -hmm. And that, that God worked. Yeah. The word of God tells us he's still and know that I am. Yeah, but I'm God. Yes. Not only in the good times, but also in the bad times. You see, um, unfortunately, very popular uh, evangelists, they got this prosperous gospel. Mm -hmm. So, and they make it seem that the word of God lets us know that there is no, no, no trials or tribulation. There's no way, there's no place in the Bible that says we are exempt of that mm -hmm. because we have accepted the Heavenly Father. So we just get a, got to understand that and know that though we go through something, God is there with us. Amen. Amen. You know? Amen. But riches and wealth as we see it might be different from God's perspective. Because mm. yeah. when we think of Jeremiah, it says, I know the plans I think towards you, plans, thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Or one version said to prosper you, to give you hope and a future. Mm -hmm. But then there's another text that says, that we should be in good health even as our soul prospers. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we might be looking for material wealth, but God is trying for us to prosper spiritually. Yeah. Because if we have the wealth of this world, mm -hmm. 
and do not have a relationship with Jesus, we won't be able to stand. So what prosperity are we seeking? That might be where we think, well, I'm not prosperous. I don't have the big house. I don't drive a nice car. I don't have this. But if we have Jesus, we have everything. Amen. One with God is the majority. He owns the world. Amen. Even if you know Warren Buffett or Oprah or whoever that has millions. The guy who owns, owns Amazon, what's his name? Bezos. Bezos. Our faith is uncertain. Yeah, it is Yeah, we all find Amazon. Um, Zuckerberg owns Facebook. Right, Zuckerberg owns Facebook. I'm looking for another name. We have Elon Musk. Oh, yeah. Elon Musk. Oh, yeah. If you're Elon, oh, yeah. Tesla, yeah. if you're looking for that, that's the name. <laughs> <laughs> they just declare him the richest man in the world. Yeah. So yeah. even if you are connected with him, that doesn't help you. God has more. All the millionaires, whose earth are they on? They're on God's planet Earth. Yeah. Amen. This is my Father's world. Amen. They don't. Some of them might not acknowledge Him as Lord and Savior. So we're even richer than them because He owns Amen. everything. Amen. Whatever they build and create. When babies come out, they don't come with gold nuggets <laughs> in their hands. They can start to build stuff with. So whatever they're using. Whatever materials they're going wherever to, to mine out of the earth belongs to God. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Right. You're going to say something, Sister Nubia? And sometimes I think that that is the only joyful thing that they're going to have. Mm -hmm. Because unfortunately, most of them, the richer they get, the farther they get from yes. God. Exactly. So the, the God becomes the money, the wealth, and all the things that the world offers them. In the other hand, we may not get, except all our own salary, but we know that we will become richer at the end mm -hmm. when God comes and gives us what he has promised to us. Amen. And God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Amen. So Amen. God gives us the strength to pass through everything because we know that no matter what, we can go to him. Yes. Amen. Yeah, we have faith, but uncertain. In the period where God is silent, that's the danger of our faith that mm. collapse. Yep. Because we want that, uh, we want that uh, God will answer right away. That's why David in, in Psalms 42, where is your God? Uh, in Psalms 42, it says here, uh, uh, I think, uh, where is that? Okay, verse 3. My thirst have been my food day and night. Why say to me all the day long, where is your God? So this is the time where God is silent. And we want immediate answer. But God is silent because he has an appropriate time for us. Yes. Yeah, so that's why the danger there when God is silent. Uh, then that we question, where is you God? Where is God? Where are you? Where is you? Yeah. And, and that comes back to the relationship with God. Because if we develop a strong relationship with him in the good time and remember that he's faithful, then even when the bad time comes, so well, he's, faith, he's a faithful God, that's his character. He yes. will be faithful even when I can't hear him or I can't see him. As the song says, when you can't trace his hand, trust his heart. And that's the place we have to get to. The says, the just shall live by sight. By faith. By faith. The just live shall there. live uh, by faith. faith. I will remember, it's my word, I will remember your wonders of all. So our house is just to remember how God deals in the past, not yes, in the present, even in the future. Amen. Just remember that. If I may. Go ahead. If we notice the, the life of Jesus, who did he depend on? Uh, and his father. And his father. Okay, we all agree on that? Yes. So, did Jesus lack anything on this earth? No. No. That's what was he born was. in the best of the hospitals with the best of the kids? No. 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 He was born in a manger yeah. with yeah. animals. Did he lack a place? No. The Father always has provided for Jesus. He, in, in his most trying 
times God was there with him. Kasemin, when he was shedding blood, sweat down his face, it was the agony for you and I. Yeah. Did God not give him strength in that most trying moment when the devil and everything, all pressure was on him? So we think that if that God is not interested in us. We just need to continue on depending on Jesus Christ. Amen. Because we have a defeated foe that is on our tracks. You know? So let's look at Psalms 56 verses 8 to 11. It says, Thou tellest my wandering, put thou my tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? Mm. When I cry unto thee, then shall my enemies turn back. This I know, for God is for me. Amen. In God will I praise his word. In the Lord will I praise his word. In God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. Amen. Amen. So many of us Things and times get hard. Life get tough. Some of us might cry in the night. Nobody might know. Some of us experience some hard things. But the comforting thing that we must walk away with, God collects our tears in our bodies. So not one tear fall without him taking notice. That's how much the God we serve loves us. Yes. On Wednesday it says, has his promise failed evermore? Mm. He doesn't change. So if he loved in the past, and the Lord I changed not, he will love and care for us in the, in the future. On Wednesday, the psalmist was experiencing some distress that he was up all night. Has anyone been up all night because yes, of yes. situations? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And who was there as your company? God. God. Only God. God was there with you. And we have to keep these things in mind because the time is coming when all earthly support for some of us will be cut off. So we have to get in the habit and the mindset that Jesus is always with me. He promised that I will never leave thee nor, nor forsake me, thee. That's in Joshua 21 verse 45. He will never leave us nor forsake us. And it mentions some Bible characters who went through sleep, sleepless night. Nebuchadnezzar, when he had the dream and he couldn't figure out what, what, had, what had happened. Pharaoh, after he saw all those plagues and stuff happening, he was uneasy. But sometimes the sleepless night or sometimes the Lord wake you up early in the morning so that we can commune with him. Yes. Sometimes you're up and you can't sleep. Get a Bible and read. Fill your mind with the word of God. It says, great peace have they which love thy law and nothing shall offend them. Yes. If we spend more time in the word, it will give us peace and comfort. Yeah, and if we turn our mind to something positive, it helps. Mm -hmm. If you focus on the situation, you're just right here and now. And worry doesn't change anything. It's blind. It cannot discern the future. Mm -hmm. All it does is send up your, your high blood pressure. Go ahead. The word of God says, be anxious for nothing. It also tells us that without faith is an impossible to please God. When you see, when, when he said, in God I have put my trust, I will not be afraid of man because God is with him. He understood that whatever promise God has, has left written for us, we must trust in the word. That's why Daniel made a decision and he honored God before man. That's why his friends honored God before man, regardless of the consequence that was going to happen. And what happened? God ma manifested himself in a great way. Mm -hmm. That it brought, Nebuch it brought Nebuchadnezzar, it brought kings and powers of all the world to understand that there's one powerful on um, God. Do you not think that all those kingdoms heard what happened in that fire? Oh, yeah. Yes. Huh? That a king seen the fourth person, and then he came in to be an animal, and then that king became back to be a king. Brothers and sisters, 
These things are written for our examples and our admonition that we may be strengthened. Like you said, sister, God has not changed. He's still the same. Through, there are miracles happening in the world that, that we might not hear of, but God is working. Amen. You know? Amen. We're up and we can walk and we can breathe. That's a miracle. Yes, yes. We're, wa miracle. we're walking miracles. We testify. Mm. All of us have a tag in us made by God. Amen. Because he's the creator of heaven mm. and earth. Okay. So on Wednesday, we're going to ask that question. Think about past times when the Lord worked in your life. How can that truth help you to deal with whatever you are facing now? Can someone just share? Well, those past experiences, no matter how hard they have been, and they will be because we still may have to confront some. Always give us the strength after you pass through them that there is a God Amen. who cares. There is a Jesus who is interceding. And the most beautiful thing is that he hasn't stopped. Amen. Because he's the same yesterday, today, today and, and tomorrow. Amen. So that's when everything falls apart around us, we know for sure, I know for sure, that my God is. Amen. That without him, I won't be able to be what I am. And everything is for a reason, for a purpose. And if we trust that whatever we have to face is for, when he said that he will turn the bad things to us, I'm paraphrasing the verse because I don't know in English, is for our own good. If we believe that, no matter what, we know that we're going to become victorious in Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So turn to Lamentations 3. Verse 22 and 23. And what Sister Newberg is talking about in Isaiah, there's a text that talks about he gives beauty for ashes. So I promise we're going to read in Lamentations 3, verses 22 and 23, and then we'll move on to Thursday. If you find, please read. Lamentation chapter 3, verse 22 and 23. Oh, the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassion bear not. Verse 23. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Small is his faithfulness. Great. Great, Great is his faithfulness. Amen. And his mercies are new every, 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 every morning. year. Every morning. every morning. So we got mercies this morning. Yes. Amen. We're here. So the God we serve will provide new mercies for each day. And he's faithful. Jesus. Because when we think of the refiner's fire that we study, when the goldsmith knows that it's purified, is when he can see his reflection in it. And gold is not purified in a freezer frozen. Mm -hmm. But it's put in fire to the umpteenth degree. So it says, count it not when diverse temptation and trial fall upon you. The trial of your faith work at patience and let per patience do what? Endure. Have his perfect work. That the man of God may be thoroughly furnished, lacking nothing. Amen. So the impurities are going away while we're going through the fire. One of the texts we read earlier say, you know, he felt like the floods were overtaking him. Yeah. What did the Lord say? When the enemy comes in like a flood, what will he do? He will lift up a standard against him. So we just have to say, Lord, you promise in your word to lift up a standard against him. We have to use the word. Amen. Just like Jesus when he was tempted in Matthew 4. He said, it is written. We have to know 
what is written. If we don't know what is written, we can't say to Satan it is written. Amen. And that's important. If we want our minds to be revived, our memories to come back, start committing scriptures to memory. When you're running, so if you're running to the rocks and mountains, you might not be able to carry the big heavy Bible. But if it's in here, you have it wherever you go. Amen. We have to get back to being the people of the book. Amen. We have to get back to being yeah. the people of the book. Amen. The scripture is our only safeguard. safeguard. Amen. But if you don't know it, it won't be able to guard you. Let's go on to Thursday. Lest the righteous be tempted. So let's go to Psalms 37. Verse 1 and 8, and one and then Psalms 125, verse 3. Psalms 37. Um, verse 1 and verse 8, please. Do not fret because of those who are evil, or be envious of those who do wrong. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in the way, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Thank you. So, what is it saying in, in chapter 37? Do not, do not fret. For it's either of, of the same ver uh, chapter. Oh, what is what what is it saying? You just read it. What what is it saying? Oh, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret when people succeed in the ways when they carry out their wicked schemes. And there's a text that says, "Vengeance is mine; I shall shall repay," it, said the Lord of hosts. So let us not think when evil is done to us to repay evil for evil. What does Proverbs says? A soft answer. Turn it away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. So it's important for us not to return kind for kind. Because if Jesus is working in us, as our mother said, the love of Christ constrains us. You would want to do it, but because Jesus is in you, he will constrain you. That's why it's important to spend that time in the morning. Something you read in your devotion, something a song that you sing, then when you get to that temptation, that same song will come back in your mind or, or he'll give you another song. Most mornings I get up, I get up with a song. And sometimes the song is playing in my head or I'm singing it. Then I realize, oh, this is the song I'm singing because you're, you're, it's some part in the verse. Mm -hmm. That's the power of God. Mm -hmm. He loves us so much. So the, the foolish, so it's telling us not to be envious of the foolish. Because the foolish said in his heart, Psalms 14, verse 1, there is no God. There is no God. But what are we called to do? Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. And keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Amen. For God shall bring every work into judgment, and every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So the God we serve is looking for people who fear him, not afraid of him, but respect him and reverence him, and those who keep his commandments. As Revelation 14, 12, here the patience of the saints, here are they who keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus because there is a judgment we talk about the investigative judgment none of us know when our names are called so it's important that we are ready the lesson this week is a very important lesson because he was at death's door he experienced evil days sometimes we may wonder where is God Sometimes you say, Lord, you promised to do so and so, but I'm not seeing the promise that you made. Mm -hmm. But God is not a man that he should, uh, that he should lie. Mm -hmm. So if he, he promised, it will 
come to pass. So let us not be tempted or get discouraged when we fall on difficult times and it seems like God is not moving the way that we want him to. But let us, as the title said, singing the Lord's song. Let's continue to sing. When the praises go up, the blessings will come down. So let us keep singing because Jesus is coming again. Amen. Please stand and let's turn to him number 240. Elder Valco is coming this way to sing for us. Fairest <laughs> Lord Jesus. Father, when we go through the tough and the hard times in this life, 
may we look to heaven where you have gone to prepare a place for us where there will be no more crying, no more death, no more sickness, no more pain, but joy forevermore. Amen. Father, give us hearts, minds, bodies, and souls that long for your return. Father, help us daily to prepare to meet you in peace when you shall return. Bless us, Lord, and keep us. For in you we put our trust. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Church plants can be a space where we can invite people to share their questions, doubts, and perspectives. A place to listen to their stories and experiences and show them respect and compassion. By doing this, we can build trust and friendship and demonstrate the love of Christ. Jonathan is the pastor of Sarah, a church plant he helped start in Madrid, Spain. He's also the associate director for the Global Mission Center for Secular and Post-Christian Mission. The goal of the center is to better understand secular and postmodern people and to help them live a real experience with God. They've discovered that people who may not feel comfortable in a traditional, established church setting are often open to joining a new, developing community that is friendly, authentic, and diverse. And today, uh, Spain is the most secularizing, uh, uh, he has the highest secularism ratio in Europe. And up to 60% of the people don't believe in, in God, or at least don't, don't practice any religion at all. Sylvia's relationship with God had ups and downs from as far back as she could remember. Based on her childhood experience in a Christian school, she thought of God as strict, but she also questioned if there was more to him. So she started searching. I can't remember what I typed, but one day I was Googling and I found Sarah. And I went there on my own, and to my surprise, I felt really comfortable. I enjoyed the experience, and I started seeing God in a different light. I wanted to open that door again, to let him come into my life again. I went from, I don't believe in you, to, this cannot be a coincidence. He was knocking on my door again. I started looking at him in a different way. I wanted to know him better, to rediscover him through Sarah, with no prejudices. This is something I have to thank my church, Sarah, for. She started uh, the relationship with us, and step by step, she got baptized uh, after two years. In Sarah, I feel loved. And that is something absolutely beautiful. To me, this is the main difference. With God, I used to feel judged. But now, to me, God is just love. Sylvia is just one of the people whose life was transformed because of Sarah. While this community continues to grow, they are building a new space to facilitate more people and expand their services to help relieve societal issues. We don't want to, to just open on Sabbath. We want a center of influence that helps people with mental health. A cafe where we are going to sell vegan food and, and also vegetarian food. And the, the, the revenues are going to support this uh, mental health for people who can't afford uh, mental health therapies, especially in, in Europe. And, and I would say for the case of Spain, it's, uh, it's uh, triple the, 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 the case of suicides in Spain after the COVID. Please pray for the members of Sarah as they serve with compassion and kindness. To learn more about church planting efforts such as Sarah, visit globalmissioncenters.org. Thank you for your prayers and support of Global Mission. just so we don't interrupt worship service. Thank you. Also, please join us downstairs for our fellowship meal after the services. Everyone's invited. So we hope you'll stick around for that. We want to thank our health ministries team for our health seminar last weekend. 
um, we were blessed by the ministry of Brother Rico Hill, and we look forward to our next health event, which isn't far away. It's in February. So <laughs> uh, we'll have more information soon, I think. I think it's the end of the month, so I'll have more information on that soon. Our 28 Fundamental Beliefs Bible Study is going to be taking place this afternoon after the fellowship meal. Our topic is the millennium and the end of sin. So we hope you can all join us for that as well. We have a church board meeting tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. So all elders and board members, um, you're encouraged to attend this important meeting. It's tomorrow here at the church at 10 a.m. for all elders and board members. We have AY next Sabbath, February 10th, and that's gonna be after our fellowship meal. So we hope you can make plans to join us for singing, Bible games, and more. All ages are welcome, so we hope you can make time for um, our AY program. Also, please join us for prayer meeting, which is every Wednesday evening at 7 here at the church. So we hope we can see you all there. And also, if you can't make it to church, we have um, Facebook and YouTube that we stream on. So we have all that information in the bulletin as well. Um, were there any additional announcements that I may have overlooked? Okay, well, everyone, welcome and happy Sabbath.
in happy Sabbath. Our call to worship is found in number 741. And the title is, The Shepherd Cares for His People. These are the words of the Lord God. Now I myself will ask after my sheep and go in search of them. As so the shepherd goes in search of his sheep, when his flock is dispersed all around him, he will go in search of my sheep. And the student, no matter where they are scattered in dark and cloudy days, I will bring them out from every nation, gather them in from other lands, and lead them home to their own soil. I will raise them on the mountains of Israel, by the streams in the Arabian fields. I will feed them on good grains and corn, and the pasture shall be in the high mountains of Israel. There they will rest. There in good pasture, and find rich grazing on the mountains of Israel. I myself will tend my flock, I will tend them in the fold, says the Lord. Now together, I will search for the lost, recover the stranger, bandage the hurt, strengthen the sick, leave the heaven in the strong plague, and give them their proper food. Amen. May the Lord continue to bless us as He's blessing His word. Let us pray. Father God, who loved this world, who loved this church, and who loved us, your people, thank you for the continued care for us, your sheep. You now are our shepherd who love us so much, concerned, who care us so much. So thank you that until now, you never forsake and abandon us, but you brought us closer to thy bosom and feel that we are the precious jewels in your sight. Thank you, Father, for being in our midst as we study together your words.
16, verses 19 to 31. 19 to 21 of Luke 16. The rich man and Lazarus. There was a certain rich man who was clothed up in purple and fine linen and felt so justly every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of stones, who was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his souls. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And being in torment in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And sent Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in, in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received uh, your good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted in your torment. And beside all this, between us and you there is a great cause fixed, so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. Then he said, I beg you therefore, Father, that you will send him to my father's house. For I have five brothers, that he may testify to them, that they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them heal them. And he said, No, Father Abraham. But if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to them, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rises from the dead. The Lord continue to bless his holy words and bless your soul. Please be seated. Church, good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Thank you for coming and joining our worship this morning. In the name of our uh, church leaders, our elders, we welcome you to our church this morning. To our worship. Uh, where's Mom Jilly? Do we have. No, no, no camera. Okay. So we don't have new covers today, but for the sake of our, of your presence, of course, we extend our, our welcome. Thank you for coming. And I hope that the Lord will bless each one of us and we will enjoy His care and His blessings. Okay, we have visitors coming. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. Welcome. We're just uh, extending our welcome. And those who are watching us in... Uh, no, there's no, there's no video this time. I remember. So, okay. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for coming. Could you tell where you come from? Everyone don't know.
from Lincoln we have primarily a church so thank you all right now we will sing the welcome song Sabbath. 
everyone. How are you today? Amen. Amen. Good, good. Uh, well, I'm here to tell you some message from from Rico Hill, Brother Rico Hill. He was here last week. How many of you were here in our health seminar weekend? Amen. I hope you guys were blessed. Uh, he wanted you to know that he's been bragging about this church <laughs> because he felt a lot of love from most of us. And so he's really uh, felt enriched his life because of coming here. He's had a great blessing. And he hopes to come back, just like some of you mentioned wanting him to come back. So that's probably going to be, yeah, you are going to to come back because the message of health and the message of, of the great controversy together with the health, with the three angels message, sorry, goes together, right? So the more we learn about the Bible, the more we score about health too. And so I think that's what makes the message so powerful in itself. Well, so on behalf of him, thank you so much for your, for your uh, love, support, and for everything that you have done. Uh, he mentioned that he has a few books, and I know some of you are interested. So I have made a list of the three books in this. I had made a, an Excel file, but I don't have a printer at home, so I couldn't do it. But if you're interested, write your name, and you put a, a check or an X in the book that you want to get. So I have, there's three books that he has. And so I've labeled them, one, two, three, book number one, book number two, number, number three. And then I, you have to write your name on the left side, and then check which one of the books you would like to get. So what, what we're going to do is we're going to send this list to him. He's going to ship them all together and then we can distribute them Amen. that way. Okay. So I will write books here <laughs> and you can pass it around um, here. Let me just do that right now because I always say I'm going to give you all and then I don't because I forget. Okay. So name, write your name and if you can do a contact right below that so that, uh, and then number one, number two, number three. And you just pretend this is an Excel file, you know, it's like really nice and done really well. <laughs> and just, if you need more space for your name, just take the uh, line. Okay. In the front. Yes, they're over here. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know if it's good to talk about money right now. <laughs> we're not doing business. <laughs> Okay, we're going to the message for today. It's loving with a heart like Jesus. So we've been learning a lot about health, and now we need to apply health in a loving way. But not just that, right? This month, some people call it a, the month of love because of a different tradition. But we are going to teach ourselves and teach the world that there is no love if there is no Jesus. Right? How many of you remember what happened at the Last Supper? That's how this story begins. The Last Supper, people were just standing around. And they were waiting for a servant to come. Because the custom was for them to clean their feet and wash their, uh, their hands and so forth. Right? But guess the most humble person took the approach to do it, and that was Jesus. So the tips that we're going to have for the next four Sabbaths, I think, for this month, yes, uh, it's going to be about health tips and how you can be a more loving family member to your own family. <laughs> it's for both wives, for, for brothers and sisters, for anyone that you live around, even your neighbors, right? So here are a few th tips that how you can be more loving. Loving deeply and purely. Jesus' love for us is deep and pure. In its depth, he is totally forgiving and is and in his purity, he leaves no room for anyone to doubt his love. How deep is your love for your husband or wife? How do you need to forgive and what do you need to say you're sorry for? How pure is your love? Do your words or behavior ever prevent your spouse from experiencing your love as pure and transparent? Looking for the diamonds. Make a list of your partner's special gifts, qualities, and strengths. Write down as many as you can and add more when you notice them. When we focus on positive qualities, we help each other to blossom and to grow. 
Hopefully you can remember one of, of these things from this list. How can I develop my own spiritual gifts and character strengths and what positive effect might they have on our relationship? Being affectionate, here's another one. Love needs to be expressed in warm words, eye contact, smiles, getting touching, uh, gentle touching, sorry, time together, thoughtful gifts or helpful support. Different cultures and families express affection differently, but the important thing is to love others the way they like to be loved, not just the way we want to love them. Sometimes we know what to do for ourselves and we think that others like the same ways, right? But everybody's different, so we have to figure that out. Ask your husband or wife, and this can be as your brother, right? There are two of them right there. <laughs> Our favorite children. <laughs> Ask your husband or wife or brother or sister or sibling or whatever you want, fill in the blank, to write down 10 times when they felt especially loved by you and three other gestures that will make them feel loved. Then spend at least five minutes a day doing whatever makes your partner feel loved. Notice the differences it makes to your relationship. Um, connecting emotionally. Jesus was happy with his friends when they were happy and sad when they were sad. When something amazing happens to your husband or wife or brother or sister or cousin, celebrate together. And when your spouse is sad, just sit and be sad together. When our partners don't share in our sadness or joy, we can feel very alone. But when we share in each other's emotions, we strengthen the love bond between us. How can I be more responsive to my partner's emotions so that they can strengthen the love bond between us? And last but not least, I'm going to read Humbly Hospitable. When Jesus knelt down to wash his disciples' feet, he wasn't only being humble but also hospitable. Hospitality is doing whatever it takes to make someone feel comfortable, welcome, and special. It's pouring a glass of water for your spouse on a hot day, setting the table attractively, turning the heated blanket on to warm, to warm their side of the bed, or doing anything else to touch their heart with a smile. How can I show warm hospitality to my partner today? Well, there are a few more things that we can think about, but God is going to give you the desires of your heart, but he also wants you to share that with someone else. Whether it's your friends or your co-workers, try to do something kind and loving this week and see how you will also be joyful and kind. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you, Sarah. I'm going to watch on this story to share the video. Someone is watching. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? Once upon a time, a man had a cunning plan. He wanted to steal corn from his neighbor's cornfields. He thought, if I take just a little from each field, no one will notice. He set out on a dark, overcast night taking his little daughter with him for a lookout. When he got to the first field, he heard his daughter whisper, Daddy, someone's watching you. Startled, he moved to the second field, only to hear his daughter's voice again saying, Daddy, someone is watching you. Annoyed, he asked, Why do you keep saying that someone is watching you? I've looked everywhere and I don't see anyone. But the little girl, pointing to the dark sky, whispered, Dad, someone is watching you from above. This story reminds us that when we sin alone, even at night and indoors, we sin in the presence of God. Living faithfully means remembering that God is always by our side, not to instill fear, but to protect, guide, and bring joy. Living like this means we can remain faithful, even when we're away from our spouse, or we are the only Christians in the classroom or at work, there is always someone watching. As you express your faithfulness through the return of tithes and promised regular and systematic offerings, thank God for the privilege of living and walking in the company of a God of love and mercy. May we put our desires last and God first. Amen. 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 
ne sono il coletto, non ti metti il traje, non ti va bene. Things that you continue to bestow upon us. You love us so much that you take care of us. You are a loving Father. We praise your name. We thank you so much again for every one of us here in this church this morning, praising your name. We pray that you bless them, each one of us, bless our loved ones, finally, also. Bless the times of the offering you just collected. We pray that you bless them, multiply them, Lord. And may they be used for your name's honor and glory. That the gospel can go forward to all the world as a witness to all the nations so that Jesus can come. Father, bless us. Keep us under your wings. And thank you so much for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Is it time for our prayer requests and testimonies? Please share with us what the Lord has done for you during the week. And bless us all. Sister Catherine. Um, so I just want for the um, Hancock family. Oh, yes, Sister Elizabeth. Hi, church. Good morning. As, as always, I would like to say thanks to God for bringing me here safely, bringing all of us here safely. And I'd like to ask for prayers for my family and friends, for all my neighbors, for everyone here in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, church. I want to uh, express my 
joy in Thanksgiving for all the prayers and, and, and help that I got from this church this week when I was not feeling well. What a blessing it has been for me. Amen. And I praise the Lord for, for all of you. I'd like to, to ask for prayer requests uh, for my family. And, and for those, I have friends in Florida who lost a good friend this week, and this lady had no family. Amen. And so I pray, pray uh, for, for the Lay family uh, as they, they did lose their friend. Amen. Shall we start with everyone? Uh, I just want to give thanks for all your prayers. Um, we're grateful. Tess and I, our whole family now is feeling much better. Tess is just at the tail end, so she's home with Dad, and um, we're here praising the Lord. Um, I also want to give thanks. I don't know if um, it has been mentioned. Uh, we had Tess enrolled for child care. I started work three weeks ago, which we were all sick, and but, you know, God has given us the strength um, that... The child care we had her enrolled, price went up before she could start in, and my husband and I prayed about it, and my brother at the same time was having a conversation with his wife, and he was gonna stay home, she was gonna stay home with her kids, and now she will be taking tests in, and we will be saving a good amount of money. <laughs> so we are very thankful for that, and the Lord literally answered within 24 hours of that happening, and we're just, he's just perfect. So we just thankful. Yes. Happy Sabbath again. Uh, I'm so grateful because last night or last week I reconnected with two friends from Rhode Island and they're a couple and now they have a, a young son, he's four years old. And last night they invited us to go to a Bible study, a praise kind of slash worship. And so we went and it was awesome because I had two other friends that I hadn't seen for like 13 years. So the reconnection was awesome, and just being there, laughing with them, remembering and memories. I forgot my purse there at the house because just too much. I, I love people, and so when I'm with people, I forget about everything else. <laughs> but I have to leave. So God is good, and I thank you for that, for bringing people closer to us. And you too, I want to thank you so much for praying. Make changes to, to be prepared for the kingdom. Amen. 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 Yes, I want the church to pray for both of my daughter's um, private keys um, and for my family also. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Happy Father. We want to thank God for everything that you give us every day. We're so grateful. And today we want to uh, request a special a bless for Bailey, who's gonna be seven years old in February 6th this year. Thank you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> praise the Lord, everybody. Um, I <clears throat> praise God that I got my paycheck <laughs> because expecting a paycheck on Friday for my job, woke up in the morning. You know, it's like Christmas every two weeks. You wake up and it's like, hey, where's my money? And then we have a new payroll system at my job. And it's like, why is my paycheck say like one cent? And it's like, I know that I work. So, you know, work stopped that day. <laughs> we had to talk to HR. And payroll, and I have a new boss, and she's so nice. She says, Gregory, we're going to get you paid. Don't you worry. We're going to get on it. And she just made that situation a, prior, a priority. I said, someone need to ring up my money, right? It's, it's, so I didn't get the money until this morning, but praise God, I got it. So, you know, you take things for granted because, you know, you know, you'd be frantic if you didn't see your paycheck. Right. It wouldn't be a happy day. So, you know, I just praise God for the little, not the little things, the big things, but for the things that we take for granted. So, you know, my job ran up my money. Praise God. So 
someone else. For me, I praise the Lord. I thank the Lord again. Um, as I said on um, Wednesday at prayer meeting, the Lord has blessed me, protected me. Even though I don't have a monetary thing, but they gave me a brand new truck and me to van to drive. I was so surprised to see a hybrid, brand new, just for me to drive my students to school. It's amazing. I'm learning something every single day on that day. It's so complicated, but I enjoy, I'm enjoying it. So pray for me so that I can be saved. But by the time you touch that pedal, oh, that thing is... <laughs> oh, man. So I praise the Lord for that. Those blessings upon my family and everything. And continue to pray for this church. Please, please, please keep prayer. Keep this church in your prayer. In your prayer. Every single day, every single hour, keep on praying for this church. We need prayer. And we know that the Lord is with us. We have nothing to fear. Amen. Amen. Silent request? Okay, let us need for prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Father, we love you because you, we know that you loved us first. And we cannot love you the same way you love us because we cannot understand the love. Thank you for Jesus. We are approaching your throne of grace into the name, merit, and righteousness of Jesus. Thanking you, Lord, for so many things you have done for us, for the blessings you continue to receive from you, for divine protection, for your healing and upon that has been upon us, for taking care of us, Lord, daily. And not only us, our loved ones, finally. You have been with them, Lord, and you continue to bless them. We give you thanks. As we said, Lord, we come with our sins, our shortcomings, our iniquities, unrighteousness. We cast them all at the foot of Jesus. At the foot of the cross, we are kneeling now, Lord, confessing that we are not good. There is no good, no good in us. We ask you forgiveness. May the blood of Christ cleanse us for all those iniquities. And accept us and bless each and every one of us as we come to you, knowing that you are a loving Father, Father, a merciful Father, a forgiving Father. Accept us and bless us. Bless this church, Lord. Bless the leadership of this church. We pray for the general conference, for the South American conference, and all the conferences to our as we seven the Adventists are struggling, we are fighting the good fight. <coughs> oh Lord, help us with your Holy Spirit, Lord, and witness for you, inviting people to come at the foot of the cross and give their heart to Jesus. Lord, we need you more than ever. Manifest your divine presence, Lord, and fill us with strength, with love, with faith. Help us to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus only, the author and finisher of our faith. So bless us. Keep your healing upon us, those who are sick on us. You know the sickness is um, we are all suffering. Spiritual sickness, mental sickness, physical sickness. Lord, you are the, the only doctor like science who heals. Your people are taking medication and going, see visiting doctors and nurses, but you are the only one who heals. Help us to believe that. And help us cut ourselves, cast ourselves into your hands. And help us to, to do what you have 
in store for us. You know, restore us physically, mentally, physically, spiritually. Help us to be good food soldiers in order to fight a good fight. We thank you for everything you have done for us. Continue to bless us. Bless us, Sister Catherine, as she is asking prayer for her cousin. You know the situation. Bless and you know, we pray. Pray for Jennifer again. Uh, also, her sister. She always asks prayer for her. Please restore her and bless her. We pray for Sister Perrin, who is happy to be with us and we are happy to see her also. When she's not here, we miss her. We pray that your healing end be constantly upon her and heal her completely. We love our sister, Lord. Bless her. Sister Rosa is thanking you for everything you have done for her, for her family. Thank you for the prayers that we are addressing to you in our favor. We pray that you continue to be with them. Tess. May your healing be continue to be upon him as she's home with, with daddy. We pray that your healing be upon him, upon her, and upon him too, and bless him. And for Sister Gina, we pray for all the family members, Lord. The child care and everything. Lord, you are the one who takes care of everything. So bless the family. Sister Gloria is praying for herself, for the family, for the friends in Florida, for those who are sick. And she's uh, well grateful that your healing has been upon her, Lord. She wasn't feeling good. But she's thankful that she's in church with us. Please keep your healing upon her and bless her. Bless um, um, Brother um, Tano. Dano Hill, Dano, Dano Shadi also, that um, he can be restored, Lord. He's sick. You are the only one who can heal him. So we present him to you. Take care of him, Lord. Sister Melody is thanking you for so many things you have done in her life. We have a lot of family also. That we lifted your parents. Continue to heal Brother Louis. And we Join with her, thanking you for the good time we had last week with um, Brother Rico Hill. We pray that you bless him, bless everything that um, he's taking care of. And Lord, we know that uh, he's coming back to us. We enjoy his time with us, Lord. We think about our, our health. So many things is happening, so many things are happening in our lives, Lord because of that seminar. We pray that you help us keep watching what we are eating, what we are drinking, so that we can be in good health, ready to help to be with Jesus and be translated to heaven to be with our Savior forever. We pray that you bless our Francisco Melody's Bible study and may the Holy Spirit be constantly with us. Help us do so. We pray for Sister Rodriguez as uh, she's praying for herself, for Brother Hector, for the, the daughters. Lord, bring, please uh, bring answers to the questionings, to the problems also. We're praying for our sister, asking prayer for herself, for the babies. Thank you so much for her presence in with us. Continue to bless her with prayer. We're praying also, Lord, for the visitors who are visiting us coming from everywhere they come from, we pray that your special blessings be poured upon them and they can enjoy the worship service with us and they can come back all the time to worship with us, Lord, and give you praise and honor that belong to you. Elder Bloomfield is being so thankful to you. She can, he, he cast his worries in, him, on, in you, knowing that you are the one who takes care of him. He has nothing to fear. Therefore, Lord, thank you for things he had concern of and continue to bless him. Bless Isabel and Thaddeus and his mother, loving mother in Toronto as well. Lord, you know the prayer requests. You know our joy. You know our, our Lord, our sadness. Everything you know and more. We bring them all before you, asking you in the name of Jesus to bring answers, to calm us, 
to heal us and to give us the comfort that we need. Lord, Lord, we don't have to enumerate anything. You know them all. So please be with us, be with this church, and bless us. Thank you so much for everything you have done for us, and thank you for things you continue to do for us. Bless your leaders, the pastors, evangelists, missionaries, the call brothers to our door. May their work be fruitful, Lord, and so that um, we can go and gain as many souls for you. And Jesus might come soon. But this work will be finished by us all. Thank you so much for having us. Here with Pastor Nelito, as he's going to share the word of God, word of God with us. May your Holy Spirit stand with him so that every word that will he will utter will come directly from your tongues. Thank you so much for in Jesus' name. Now we're going to write a new story. Let them come. and I have a wonderful story called Let Them Come. The memory verse is from Luke chapter 18, verse 16. It says, let the little children come to me. The message is Jesus loves me. He wants me in his family. Who is your favorite grown-up besides your parents? Is it your grandma or grandpa? Your Sabbath school teacher? When Jesus was on earth, he was many children's favorite grown-up. One day, a little boy's mother heard that Jesus was in her town. She didn't know where he was, so she asked her neighbor, I heard that Jesus is in town. Do you know where he is? I want him to pray for my little boy. Jesus is here? The neighbor asked. I'll come with you to find him. The neighbor picked up her little girl. The two mothers walked quickly toward town. Another mother saw them. Where are you going? She asked. We're going to find Jesus, the first mother said. Come with us. I will, said the mother. She called her two children. Come children, we're going to see Jesus. As the mothers and their children hurried toward town, they saw more mothers with their children. They must know where Jesus is, the first mother said. Let's follow them. So they did. Finally, they saw Jesus sitting under a tree. He was talking to some grown-ups. Jesus' helpers were standing nearby. They looked at all the mothers and children. One of the mothers walked right up to the men and said, Excuse me. We would like to have Jesus pray for our children. One of the men frowned. Jesus is busy. Come back later, he answered. The mothers and the children were sad. They started to go home, but then Jesus stood up and spoke to the frowning man. Let the little children come to me. Don't stop them. God loves them. They are part of my family. Jesus opened his arms and a little girl ran to him. He picked her up and hugged her. Soon all the children ran to him. What did Jesus do next? He let the children climb onto his lap. He let them touch his hands and his face. He let them give him hugs. Jesus smiled at the children. He held each child in his arms and prayed for each one. The mothers and the children were so happy that Jesus loved all the children and welcomed them into his family. Jesus loves us. We are part of his family too. Now we're going to hear 
is Sister Anubia in the special music. And next, we will be hearing the voice of our dear elder, Pastor Anubia. The song that I'm going to sing today is Psalm 120, 121. And I just, so it will be good if you can, as I sing, if you can follow me with Psalm 121, because it's exactly all the lyrics. And it says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. To God be the glory. Nothing is coming. Mis ojos a los montes, de donde vendrá mi socorro? Mi socorro viene de Jehová, quien hizo los cielos y la tierra. Mi socorro viene. Quien hizo los cielos y la tierra, no dará tu piel resbaladero, ni se dormirá el que te guarda. He aquí no se adormecerá.
Muchas gracias, hermana, novia. Uh, thank you for the nice and wonderful message of the song. The title that we are going to study, as if somewhat, it has a negative implication, and that's why God told me, uh, takes me. Could you change the title? <laughs> yeah. Who cares if a sinner goes to hell? Seldom we hear the sermon for somebody, someone who cares for someone who, who is in here. So that's why I told him I just leave it there because I, my my emphasis is on how how those individual cares for those people who will choose the wrong way. That's why there are always someone, somebody. I mean, there are always people who are concerned and cares for us. Before I go, go on, share with our eyes. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we will study this parable 
of the rich man and Lazarus. We hope that your purpose of putting this uh, story or this parable, even if it is the the, the people are are not real or the situation or the place, but because you related it, then you have the purpose, you have the message of it. So we will study with what message that we can learn in this story in Jesus' name. Yes. This is somewhat scareful or uh, fearful or dreadful uh, subject because uh, imagine hell. Uh, it's not. It's not a a, a comfortable uh, subject, and much more. It's somewhat fearful because it is Jesus Himself who related it, and if Jesus is the one seeing it, it is true. So that was as what I as what I said. It's fearful because of the subject. But as what I've said, I'll try. Because our aim as the preacher, we want that our message must be uh, comfortable and uh, it's a pleasant to the, hear, the ears of the hearer. It must be comfortable for, our, for the hearers. That's our goal. And that's why we choose a, a very good text that is really somewhat acceptable. Huh? But this verse, as what I've said, it has a negative implication. But as, as, as what Jesus is telling, I try to get some points wherein it is also comfortable and uh, somewhat uh, you feel better in this sermon that I will share to you. Who cares if a sinner goes to hell? This is somewhat global in the scope but I will nar narrow down it to a small, smaller scope. Who cares if a church member goes to jail? Who cares? And of course, church officers, perhaps the pastor, and church members, and especially the department directly involved. If I'll be in the hospital, I'm not expecting Melody and Rachel to visit me. I'm expecting Elder Jane, Elder Blomfield to visit me. Who cares? if members of the church goes to jail. I'm sure some will be happy. I'm sure. I'm speaking the fact. As a pastor for 19 years. Who cares? Then we'll go to the smaller unit. Who cares? If one of your children, one of my children, goes to jail, who cares? Of course, the parents, the brothers and sisters, or the siblings, and even teacher, the teacher of the, the child, is worried, concerned. So there are always people who, who are concerned, who, who really cares when something bad happened to you and to me. And much more, who cares if a sinner goes to hell? Whom do you think? Of course, our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father, He really cares. In fact, in our lesson, I, I, uh, I Sister Kesa mentioned that our Father, our God, always cares for us. One time, Nilda related a story 
it is somewhat uh, a, a joke, but there is a reason. There was a, a father who has four children. First uh, is a girl, then the three boys. And maybe they are well to do because he was able to support the children's education because the hardest responsibility is to, especially when they get, uh, when they take the medical courses. So, but sad to, sad to know that the youngest was in prison. The youngest. So the interviewer asked the, 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 the father, Oh, I heard that you have four children. How's the eldest? Oh, she is a doctor now. Oh, amazing. How's the second? He is an attorney. Oh, interesting. How's the third one? He is an engineer. Of course, he has four children. They, of course. The they, they interviewer continue. Then how about the young? You see, the point, my point is, we, your dad, if there are children here, we, your dad, we always protect your reputation, our children. Their father cannot afford to say that my youngest boy is in jail. That's why he said, why you have so many questions? <laughs> because he can't afford to tell that his youngest boy is in jail. That's why he's, he told the, the interviewer, why you have so many questions? <laughs> yes, our Heavenly Father cares for you and for me. This was portrayed, the picture of the caring father, it was portrayed of the father of the prodigal son. It's hurting and painful for that, for that, that uh, his loving boy, the youngest, will go away. But still, because he's a loving and a caring God, he allowed, he permitted it. But although it, it's really painful for him, but he never loses hope. He keeps on longing that his boy will come back. That's how really cares our father. He doesn't want that one of us will go to hell. He cares. He cares. Mrs. White, that I may know him. Page 367, paragraph 4. This is how interesting our heavenly father to save us. He really cares. We sinners. This is what Mrs. White said. When you look at the cross of Calvary, you cannot doubt God's love or His willingness to save. As we see the care, the love that God had for us, let response to it. So when we feel that we, our God, our Heavenly Father really cares, then let's respond to it. Let's not ignore it. Let us give to Him all the powers of our, of our being. Let's surrender to Him. We cannot afford to lose our souls. We cannot afford to sin against our Heavenly Father. Life, the eternal life in the kingdom of glory is worth everything. Life, the eternal life in the kingdom of glory is worth everything. And that's why your father, my father in heaven is interested in us. Amen. Because he wants us to save. He doesn't want that one of us will go to hell. No. If a sinner goes to hell, who cares? Of course. Your father and my father. I have a terrible experience of my second boy. I received a call from the commandant, from the dean, the dean in the in the academy. Told me, Pastor, please come. Uh, something happened to your boy, the second boy, Jong Jong. I was thinking he got sick. So when I reached there, I saw the woman very angry. How 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 did you? How did you rear your children? You're a pastor. No, how I am I'm, I'm 
innocent. I'm innocent. I did not know the story. And I know the woman because he's my parishioner when I was the, the district of Metro Cagayan and Metro, in Metro City. I, I, I know her. She's a nurse and a single mom. She has two children. And I did not know that my second boy box his, his boy. They, they were roaming in, 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 the, in the dorm. The story goes that my boy got mad because he, he, he's the, the commander, the, the assistant to the, the uh, core commander. Is the, the adjutant, the adjutant. So, and he doesn't want that because once you will be late, the commandant will allow you to crawl around the, the sentinels. The, it's it's really it's really not only um, hard hard for for uh, an individual, but it's simple. So that's why he was locking his key in his locker because his uniform is in the locker. But he cannot find. That's why he, he thought that this boy is the one hiding or uh, taking the key of his, uh, his key for this locker. So that's why it's almost time he boxed it. I don't know why he did not like his dad. I don't know. Maybe his uncle for his city. <laughs> he boxed. So I don't know the story. So the woman said, if your boy will not be disciplined, I will withdraw. My, my, my children in this academy. So it's talk, it's talk nicely. So, the, deci the first decision was he will not he will not be allowed to march as a, as a graduating. But he can he can pass, but he will not be allowed to march. Oh my! As a father, it's really painful. It, you need to listen. I, I, told, I told the principal, you need to listen the, the, the side of my boy. He was able to bust because somebody hide the key of his locker. And that your decision is it's sudden. It's sudden, your decision. But uh, the, the principal listened to the claim of the, 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 the mother of the boy because if he will not be disciplined, I will withdraw because he is the son of a pastor. I will withdraw my boy if he will not be disciplined. So, being a member also of the board of the academy, I never say anything. I told my boy, whatever the decision, will just bow. But it's painful in my part as a daddy. The 500 the contribution was returned because he cannot go their excursion as an officer, all officers, they have an excursion in Davao, another state or another province. Supposed to be, he, he will enjoy. But the 500 the contribution was returned. He cannot go. But go, there was a teacher who depended him. He depended him. That's why. When somebody happened, not only parents, your 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 siblings, but even teachers. So I told, oh, you should be thankful to mom, uh, Arsili, who depended you. So I, I was driving him home. Sometimes I cannot hold my tears, looking my boy, because the, the, the companion, the, 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 the his friends, the co-officers in the DCET, keep on texting him, comporting him. And that's why he will do like that, his face. His face. But I was looking at him. I, I feel and then my heart is like crushed. Looking my boy, who is no longer, very lonesome and depressed. I care. I care my boy, the Indian. So, when we arrive home, I told our helper, please prepare our lunch. When the table was ready, I, I told him, Langa, let's eat. I don't have appetite, Dad. No craving at all. I just lie here. She was lying at the porch, watching the TV. While I was eating, I was looking at him once in a while. And he's, he was crying. He was crying. It's really, it's really hard to him to, to bear. The punishment. As done, I was looking at him. 
That's why after I ate, I, I drove him to the city. I told him, let's go to the city. Langa. Let's go to the city. Let's go to the moon. I told him, because it's really, I, I want as dad, I want him to be happy. Even in spite of that, I want him to be happy. I give, I give the money to him. Langa, you buy something. This is the money that give to me by, by the treasurer. We buy something. In fact, I invited him to eat in, although I already finished eating, but I am as Dan, who cares for, for, the, for his boy. He did not eat, so that's why I invited him to eat in the uh, Eat All You Can, the buffet. I, I invited him, but he's still refusing because I don't have many appetite to eat. My heart really was crushed. Locking my boy, who is not happy. So I told him, Langa, what do you want? What, where, want? where will you want us to go? I will drive you. I will not even tomorrow. I will, I will call Chirbindi, the treasurer. I will not report to the office. I will go where, where, where you want us to go. So that it's all my fault. Don't as if you are the one who is suffering. Yes, I suffered Lanka because I don't want you. I don't want you to be lonesome. I want you to be happy. God. That's that. Yeah. And I know our Heavenly Father, me as an earthly dad, I feel so sorry. I feel so, yeah. so in pain and heart. Happened to my boy, how much for your heavenly, our heavenly father looking at us when we are going astray? Yeah. Yes, the one who cares, the falling sparrow, cares about all of us. Amen. Cares about all of us. That's why the lyrics of the song, Oh yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary and long, nights dreary, I know my Savior cares. Who cares if a sinner goes to hell? Your father and my father. Yes. Who cares? Luke 15, verse 10. There is joy in heaven over one sinner. There is joy. We make heaven glad when we lead people to Christ. Because he cares. If sinner goes to hell, our heavenly father cares for you and for me. Next. Who cares? If a sinner goes to hell. Only the Heavenly Father? Of course! Jesus, our elder brother. He cares for you and for me. If something happened to you and for me, yes, being our elder brother, he really interested in us. Another experience of mine, please forgive me. This, my eldest son wants to wants to uh, claim the, the, the punishment of his younger brother because we agreed uh, daddy will no longer spank you because you are already big and uh, it's painful when I when I uh, when I uh, was that um, strike with my belt or whatever no so no no so no I promise I will do, I will no longer do that but. Remember, there is always a consequence. Once you will meet, uh, commit a mistake, I will not uh, spank you, but I want you to go inside the sack. We have a lot of sack because my, my business is bakery. Although I was a pastor, but I have a bakery. So I have a lot of sacks, empty sacks for, uh, for sugar, uh, for salt. So I have been piled there. One time, I was, there was a, 
my visitor. We talk outside the, the, the house. And I heard my youngest daughter crying. So when I when I go inside, uh, my, my youngest daughter, uh, because uh, we always, uh, we do not call uh, the, na- the name. We always have the respect, and the, uh, higher the, uh, uh, which is older, than, we always respect. Na, he, he, the, uh, my eldest son, ma, uh, the youngest daughter called Kuya. Then the, the second, he called Manong. Manong box me! So, okay, as what per agreed, okay. Get the sack. This melancholic type of it, uh, it's hard for them to, to it's hard for them to please us. This is melancholic boy. In fact, when Nelda visited for the first time, my my phlegmatic uh, my phlegmatic eldest and my choleric youngest, why? Oh, ah, right away to their auntie Nelda, but my melancholic boy, you just look at her. So, he got the sack. The more I got, <laughs> the more I got mad because and even I was expecting that. Dad, sorry, Dad. No, no, no. But he got the sack. He got the sack and fold it and fold it half and the sack standing already. Standing because he pulled. The melancholic, the tinker guy, the tinker. I, there are many tinkers there. I did not, nobody, nobody told her, told him to, uh, okay, for it, no, I was, what I was talking, telling him, just get the sack, but when he got the sack, he, he pulled up, and the sack is standing there, okay, now, it's already, it's open, uh, thank you, that, but I, I just, uh, but it did inside, oh my, okay, that, now it's open, okay, go inside, when he, he stepped go inside, the my eldest son, Daddy, Daddy, please, Daddy. No, 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 Chung, no, Chung, no, no, Chung. Because my eldest, my, my second boy, as if nothing, nothing happened to him. He, he, he just go inside, but my eldest son, no, Chung, no. I'm ah, sorry, I'm ah, sorry, Daddy. No, no. My eldest boy, he wants to, no, until, okay, okay. Now, he, he just go inside the back, uh, the, 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 the sack. So, I, I need to, 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 to tie it so that I can hang it. <laughs> but my boy, Daddy, please, my eldest boy, Daddy, please, if you will, if you will put Jung Jung on the hand, me, 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 do not, uh, do, do. go, go away, Jung, let me do it, uh, let me go inside Jung. Uh, Daddy, if Jung Jung, you will hang Jung Jung, let me do it, uh, let me, let me, uh, this. Let me uh, put myself there. Yeah. I tell you, I got a lesson in that story, and that experience of mine. We are the one who pushed to be to be hung at the cross. Mm. But our elder brother, he told the father, Dad, I want to die for Nilito. I want to die for you and for me. Yes. Who cares if a sinner goes to hell? Not only our heavenly father, but Jesus. our elder brother, Jesus. He cares for you and for me. He mingled sinners. In fact, the scribe and the Pharisees were, uh, was telling him, this man received sinners. He is interested in mingling the sinners because he cares for us sinners. He did not come for the righteous, but he came to seek, to seek which was lost. That is, who cares if a sinner goes to hell? He is your elder and my elder brother. Very interested in us. He died. He, he volunteered himself. Instead, we will be the one to hang, to be punished. But he told his dad, Dad, let me die for him. Let me die for her. That's our Jesus. Even at the death, still, he is interested, even for the one soul, one soul at the cross, the thief. He still see 
because he is interested for us in it. He cares. He cares for us. Yes, many, many verses in the Bible is telling, telling us that our elder brother, our Savior Jesus Christ, he doesn't want that we will be in hell. He wants that we will be of sin. My blood. He will tell his father, my blood has been sacrificed for his sin. Forgive him. Next is, yes, who is? My boy was being dependent. Supposed to be the action was he will be he will be able to graduate, but no march, no no including no marching in the graduation. But because of the teacher, Ma'am Arsili. No. It's unfair. It's unfair for Jung Jung if if you will not allow him to march. Why why? Why is so uh that's this the, the decision is so somewhat heavier. Why? In fact, supposed to be the one who hide. Uh, uh, but I was the one also dependent, the one who hide this key. Because the one who hide the key in his locker is the son of my neighbor, the driver in the union the union uh, office. Then we are neighbor because I, I, I stayed in the union compound. So I told, uh, no, do not, do not, uh, uh, maybe he was just joking. Uh, we will accept the punishment. We will accept the punishment. But good, Ma'am Arsili depended. So, who will, who will depend us? Even teacher. Who is the teacher? John 14, 26. Who is our teacher? Who will depend us? The Holy Spirit. The Comforter will teach all. The Holy Spirit is our good teacher who cares for our souls. He will teach you all things. And He will please also for remembrance. So, even teacher, the Holy Spirit also cares for you and for me. Amen. Who give the power? Who give, who give the power for Peter? It was the Holy Spirit. Peter, after he denied his Lord, he renewed his commitment to the Lord. But because of the teacher, because of the Holy Spirit, he was transformed. We will be transformed too. We will be renewed. We will be regenerated when our teacher give us the power. When our teacher will defend us because he doesn't to us to be in hell too. Yes, Jesus bring conviction to us sinners. Oh, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, I mean. The Holy Spirit reveal who is Jesus to the repentant hearts. The Holy Spirit regenerate us according to Titus 3.5. Again, who cares if a sinner goes to hell? Your dad in heaven. Your big brother, Jesus, and your teacher who will empower us to transform us so that we will not be in Him, but in heaven. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Elder. Thank you, Pastor Nito. Let us stand now and sing number 526 because it is.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God the Father and the Holy Spirit for being concerned for our situation, for our condition. And now, may the love of God the Father continues to be upon us. And the mercy of our elder brother Jesus Christ and the empowerment and protection of our teacher, the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.